So here in section 1.8, I am very excited to introduce you to linear transformations. So in this section, we are going to shift our point of view again and think about matrix A as an object that's going to act on a vector X by multiplication to produce a new vector, matrix A times vector X. And this is what defines a transformation. So here we go. A transformation, we denote by capital T, is a function or a rule that's going to assign or map each vector x in Rn to a vector t of vector x in Rm. So looking at this illustration, we have our set Rn, and within this set lives a vector x. Now, in the set Rm, we have another vector denoted as capital T of vector x. So what a transformation does is it takes each vector x in Rn and maps it to that vector T of x. So this should be looking familiar. This is a function. And the set Rn here is called the domain of our transformation. So this is the domain of the transformation T. Now, the set Rm is called the codomain of our transformation. This is the codomain of our transformation T. So this set Rn in our illustration above is the domain. And this set Rm is the codomain. So how are we going to denote a transformation here? So our transformation notation is capital T, such that we take a vector in Rn and map it to a vector in Rm. Now, we need to specifically define this new vector, T of vector x in Rm. So we say that for every vector x in Rn, the vector t of vector x in Rm is called the image of vector x under the action of t. So this is the image of vector x. And this is specifically under the action of t. Our transformation. Now, this set of images is special. The set of images is called the range of the transformation. So the set of all images is called the range of our transformation. And again, looking at our illustration above, we can see this region shaded in blue within the codomain. That shaded region is the range. That's the set of all images of vector x under the action of t. So the range exists within the codomain. It's not necessarily equal to the codomain, but it's certainly a subset of our codomain. And as we will see a little bit later, we have a special case when the range of a transformation is equal to the codomain of the transformation. But first, we need to introduce the idea of a matrix transformation. So here we go, matrix transformations. Now, the rest of this section and a lot of the rest of this course is going to focus on mappings associated with matrix multiplication. So how do we define a matrix transformation? Well, for each vector x in the domain of T, the image of vector x under the action of t is computed as matrix A times vector x. And now this is such that A is an M by N matrix. So the image of vector x under the action of t is computed by the matrix vector multiplication. So how do we denote this transformation? Well, we say that a transformation T from Rn to Rm 
is going to map a vector x to the image of vector x under the action of t, where this is equal to matrix A times vector x. So we can observe here that the domain of the transformation is Rn. And now this is going to be such that matrix A has n columns. We can also observe from this notation that the codomain of our transformation is the set Rm. Now this is specifically such that each column of matrix A has m entries. And last but not least, we want to make note that the range of a matrix transformation is the set of all linear combinations of the columns of A. So again, the range of T is the set of all linear combinations of the columns of matrix A. Now, why is this the range of our transformation? Well, this is because each image has the form matrix A times vector X. So because each image of vector X under the action of T has the form T of vector X, which is being computed as matrix A times vector X. So this is that new vector that is produced by our matrix multiplication.